Have you ever wondered how our mind extends beyond our brain? Welcome to an exploration of the fascinating concept of the extended mind, as proposed by philosophers Andy Clark and David Chalmers. They challenge our conventional understanding of cognition, arguing that it's not confined within the boundaries of our skulls. Instead, our cognitive processes reach out, extending into the world around us. Imagine your favorite note-taking app or calendar. According to Clark and Chalmers, these aren't just handy tools. They are integral parts of your cognitive process, extensions of your mind in action. And it doesn't stop at technology. Even other people can become extensions of our minds, their expertise and insights contributing to our own cognitive processes. This bold idea shifts the way we perceive our minds and their interaction with the world. Intriguing, isn't it? Let's dive deeper into each chapter to understand this concept better. The first part of the book discusses the extension from our brain to the world. Here Clark and Chalmers delve into the captivating concept that our thoughts and cognitive processes aren't just confined to the physical boundaries of our brains. Instead, they argue, these cognitive processes stretch and extend to envelop the physical and social environment around us. They posit that our use of tools and technologies isn't merely a superficial interaction. On the contrary, these tools and technologies become an integral part of our cognitive processes. They blend seamlessly into our mental landscape, shaping our thoughts, ideas, and even our perception of the world around us. Imagine a painter and their brush, a musician and their instrument, or a writer and their pen. The tool is not just an accessory, but an extension of their mind, a conduit for their creativity. In this way, Clark and Chalmers argue, our mind is not a solitary entity, but a collaborative one. The second part of the book focuses on how technology extends our minds. Here, Clark and Chalmers dive into the fascinating exploration of how our cognitive abilities are amplified by technology. They argue that our smartphones, computers, and the internet are not just tools but extensions of our minds. These devices and platforms have woven themselves seamlessly into our thinking and problem-solving processes, essentially becoming part of us. Consider this. When we want to recall a fact, we often turn to Google. When we need to perform complex calculations, we use a calculator or software. Our minds are no longer confined to our skulls. They have extended into the digital realm, expanding their reach and capabilities. This is the essence of the author's argument. Technology does not merely serve us. Instead, we have formed a symbiotic relationship with it, making it an integral part of our cognitive processes. So it is not just about using tools, but becoming one with them. The third part of the book introduces the idea of people as extensions of our minds. Now, this might sound a bit out there, but stay with me. Andy Clark and David Chalmers argue that our social interactions, the people we connect with, the shared knowledge within our social groups, these can all become a part of our own cognitive processes. Think about it. The ideas we exchange, the insights we gain from others, the collective wisdom we tap into, all these enrich our minds, stretching our cognitive abilities beyond our physical brains. The authors suggest that our minds are not confined to the boundaries of our skulls, but spill over into the social world around us. Our minds, in a sense, are extended by the people we interact with. This gives us a fresh perspective on cognition, highlighting the importance of social connections in our thinking processes. So we are not just solitary thinkers, but social ones as well. Let's summarize the key points from the extended mind. This groundbreaking work posits that our cognition isn't limited to our brains, but extends to the tools and technologies we interact with. Our smartphones, calculators, notebooks, they're not just external aids, but integral parts of our cognitive processes. Moving on, the book also emphasizes the crucial role of social interaction in our cognitive machinery. Our interactions with people, much like our interactions with tools, form part of our thinking process. The exchange of ideas, the shared knowledge, the collaborative problem solving, they all contribute to our cognitive expansion. These ideas challenge the traditional understanding of cognition as a solitary, brain-centric process. Instead, they paint a picture of a dynamic, distributed, and interactive process that extends far beyond our skulls. So, next time you use a tool, remember, you're not just using it, you're extending your mind.